Well, we've cut back the laminates on our cut water with our, our electric plane, and it came out really nice, smooth on both sides. I needed to get the head of it done because I wanted to dub it off where the gods go right by there. So that was the first thing that had to be done. And uh, right over here, I've drawn a line under the guard right here, and I'm gonna knock about a quarter of an inch off the top of the cedar plank right here to kind of tip the guard in a little bit at least uh, because I don't want them so, so slanted out like that. So, you know, most round builds boats, actually where the guards are, especially amidships and working stations, the, 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 uh, the shapes are plumb on the outside, so the guards go on plumb if you have guards, but these ones, I just don't want them tipped out quite so much. So. That's what we're working at next right here. And I drew a line on the top here, a quarter inch in. And uh, you know, I'm gonna split that line right in half. And I can see both lines at the same time. So I gotta sneak up on it real careful. That's why it takes so many passes with the plane. You don't just put it on there at a certain depth and go down there and have it meet both of those lines. It doesn't work that way. When you're planing around a curved surface like I am up forward here, you can use shorter strokes. Planing on a straight surface is a little bit different. You have to make longer strokes so you're planing down in a hole all the time and you can't get the blades to do anything. You know, around a curve like I am right now, it cuts really, really nice around the curve. So I can use these little short strokes and work my way around. One of the tricks is to not let it get round because if it gets a little round, every time you set your plane down and try to take off, the plane is rocking a little bit and it's kind of hard to get going exactly right. So, you know, maintaining that nice flat cut is exactly what you want. You may have to influence the planer a little bit one way or the other to sneak up on one of those lines, but uh, this is when you do it. And uh, I am gonna go over it with a hand plane later on, so I won't have to take off much though. This is the tool that does the work. I do all kinds of stuff with a number five. A lot of people like a number four. I don't even own one, but you know, this thing really serves me right. And uh, you can really split that line and get all those lumps. You can hear it. It'll skip over holes and plane at the bumps. So it's just like, you know, it talks to you when you're planing. You can hear it, you can see it. I do miss using the hand plane a lot, really, because I've already done a lifetime of hand planing, but when electric power came out, you know, we set these things down a little bit, but they still do jobs that electric power can't do. You know, I can sharpen the blades very easily in different ways. This blade has got a little bit of radius to it, little tiniest bit, we're talking thousands. It stops the corner of the blade from dragging. You know, and it will make it, if anything, concave, but I don't want it to be convex because if it is, then the guard will rock around on there just like the plane would when you're trying to plane it. That looks good. It's not good. I'm gonna cut it with a handsaw. I have to. I can't get it. It wouldn't do me any good to nibble a bunch off and not make it. That's a fact. Now I'm back at the stem head and I'm gonna make a few adjustments because I cut the one side and then I decided that the top of it was a little bit too wide. It was an inch wide. so. I've reduced it down to three quarters of an inch and just drew another line. Same exact radius and everything, but it's drawn inboard a little bit. You know, it's the same principle. Don't take away too much. You know, take away some, you can always take away more. But if you take away too much, you can't put it back. I can really only make this cut with my handsaw because no matter what I tried to do with the electric plane, I wasn't gonna get in there properly. And uh, I didn't wanna cut all of that off with the chainsaw because it's a little harder to control. I'm actually gonna use the chainsaw to sneak up on the line really carefully. And uh, you know, that's not normally what you do with a chainsaw, but uh, you know, it's just like a sculpting tool is how I'm gonna use it. 
So what I'm doing here now is I'm trying to follow two lines, one across the top and one on the after side of the stem. So, you know, I could start a little bit slow because I want to make sure I'm on both lines. Because if you get off, it's harder to get back. So, you know, just be careful to start. And once I get going, I can put a little bit of power into it. Laminates are hard to work with, actually. Whether you're sawing them or whether you're trying to plane them or otherwise, you've got grain going in every direction. The hardest thing to do with laminated timbers like this is try to rabbit them because it's handwork you know, with like an adze or with a chisel or any of that stuff. Rabbiting uh, this stuff is tricky. So I'm going to take the chainsaw and take all of this black marker right off. Almost all of it, so it looks almost like that. This chainsaw is battery powered actually, and really it's a big advantage because it has very little gyroscopic effect, especially when you're pulling the trigger or letting it go. It doesn't throw you off balance really at all like a, a gasoline powered chainsaw. Besides the fact that when you're looking at your line or tending what you're doing, the chain isn't going around, you know, and the saw's not running. So every time you want to stop it, you can stop it right away. And every time you want to start it up, you can start it up right away. I think that's the biggest safety feature on the whole uh, situation with battery powered stuff. This, this works really well. You know, one of the things I've done to the saw is I've tightened the chain up pretty tight. And the other thing I know is that, you know, it cuts in little ditches, actually, as you set it down. And sometimes they get a little bit too deep and you have to work it in a little different direction so you can keep smoothing it out. But really, it's just a, a carving technique. That's all it is. It gets me where I want to go so I can get down to hand work. Those laminates are hard to cut by hand. And they're hard to cut with anything else. I couldn't think of another thing that would sculpt this out like this. I really couldn't, unless I used like a skill saw blade in a grinder. And I wasn't willing to go into that. That would be more dangerous than I'm doing right now. I'm really setting the saw down very, very lightly and letting it bounce around a little bit. And the other thing is, is that I've got the direction of the chain, so it's pulling against me. I can anticipate that very easily and lift the saw up a little bit or probably less pressure. But you wouldn't want to work the chain the other direction. Like you don't just shift over to the other side of the stem keeping the saw in the same position because it'd be pushing at you and you'd be in trouble there. So well, I'm sneaking up on that line that I made. Actually, what I'm going to do is remove most of the line, if not all of it. That's the idea. I'm on the other side of the line is my accuracy right there. Well, I'm up here at the stem, and we took the meat off there with the chainsaw. It didn't come out bad at all, but I do have to touch it up. So I've got this little wooden plane right here, and uh, it's pretty sharp, and it'll do the job. You know, the radius on this is way less than this. That means I can go ahead and plane it all over the place. If I tried to use a plane exactly that radius, I mean, I couldn't even push it. These are laminates. They're not so easy to plane. These things are hard to work. They're hard to, you know, uh, rabbit. They're hard to plane, everything. But, you know, I've got a nice sharp plane. You can get pretty aggressive with this little plane, you know, because I am using a lot of power to get it done right now. You know, I just, there's no saying no for an answer. I push, it planes. And, uh, you know, it's not being used in a finished fashion, really. In order to use it in a finished fashion, even on laminates, or especially on laminates, you kind of have to scrub it sideways a little bit. Now this is going to go a lot easier because I'm not on the end grain like this, so it planes pretty decent up here. I have in mind to thin it up on the forward side because I didn't have a line on the forward side when I took all that material off with the chainsaw or while I'm taking it off with this hand plane. You know, I, I just kind of have to, it's not a guess, but I've got to work the two sides the same. Eventually, they have to be the same. Then I'm going to scoop out the bow end of it, put some sort of a little radius as it leaves the guards up to the top, and maybe round the tail of it off a little bit. I'm also going to cut it down considerably. It's going to be cut off an inch or an inch and a half at the top. And you know, I'm smoothing it out there a little bit, but it's not completely done. You know, I'll probably take it down a little bit more, and then maybe sand it and different things to get it to look really nice and pretty. I don't even know for sure if I've got the two sides exactly the same right now, but they will be. That's it right there. Well, here we go with our guards. We're going to fasten them down there. First, we're going to run a strip of tape alongside the bottom of the 
God, because it'll help us so we don't make quite so much of a mess of the top sides, really. Then I'm going to squirt on a couple of rows of polysulfide. Once I get that done, I'm going to spread it out a little bit with a foam brush by pushing it in front of the brush. Seems to work better even, you know, than a tooth trowel on this type of stuff. So I want to get it clamped down there a little bit. I'm starting right from the middle. Once I get it down there, I don't want it sliding all over the place on me. So, you know, you kind of have to be mindful of that. And, uh, you can see that the tail end of it's controlled by that block I got it sitting on there. I've got a little gauge I made. I'm going to show you a little bit more about that gauge. Once I get the forward end of it wrapped around and I kind of clamped it to the stem head, right in approximate position really, and then I'm able to tend it as I go along fasten it and make sure it's exactly the right height. Or to make sure it's got a nice fair sweep to it before I fasten it down completely. So, you know, all I have to worry about is the bow. Once I get that done, I'll go back and secure the stern end. Once I get that first side fastened on there, I'm going to cut the forward end of it off because it would foul me up trying to put the other rail on. So I cut one off at a time. The other thing is nice because I don't have to cut them off two at a time and it's easier to get it to look pretty because I can get the angle on one the, the same as on the other, you know, by cutting them individually. So we're up forward here on the port side and we're trying to get this guard to be exactly the right height. Now you see this just slide right over the top of the guard. The guard's just not quite high enough. So what we're going to do, take a clamp like this and put it on a little bit of an angle. Check it again. Yeah, it was a little low. There you go. Now it's hooking up right on there, just a tiny little bit. That's exactly what we want right there. Now the reason why I want that rail up a little high like that is when I put the in whale on, I've got to plane the two surfaces down so that they match and I don't want to keep running into the frame heads because otherwise I have to cut the frame heads off again. So I'm just making sure that the rail and the in whale are going to be high enough so that when I plane I won't hit the frames. I am using a corded drill to drill the holes. You know, the electric power has tremendous amount of torque and I can drive screws with it and things like that, but every time I do it, I've got a hexagonal bit in that chuck. You know, the problem with the electric power or the battery power really is that the chucks on the drills aren't much good. You know, the drill bit I've got in there to drill the holes is round. The chuck doesn't want a hole round, you know, so I need a keyed chuck, you know, and uh, I have one on the, uh, you know, recorded equipment, so I use that to drill the holes and then like I say, the electric stuff or the, the battery stuff has got such torque that you can drive the screws with that where you have to drill them with a corded piece. Well, we finally got the guards on the boat and, uh, you know, there's quite a few things about it. We actually took a quarter of an inch off the side plank and to tip the guards up a little bit. And then I took a quarter of an inch off the side of the guard right here because I wanted this to be plumb. You know, like coming up against the pylon or something like that, it would suffer less damage. And if you came against a yacht or something like that, you know, that corner wouldn't damage the yacht as much. Of course, you're supposed to have fenders and all those things, but, you know, we just wanted this to be plumb, and I think it looks great like that. So that's what we got there. We've also got the cut water all trimmed right off. You know, it goes right into the keel exactly right. You can't even see the scar. And, you know, there was quite a bit of wood hanging out there, but, you know, with the electric plane, it takes minutes to do something like that. The trick to it is to be careful how you do it and uh, it was planned out pretty good. Check out the holes in the bow here, you know, right dead center. That's what I was looking for right there. I've been working on the stem head a little bit. I finally got it pretty much the shape I want, and I shortened it down. I have to do something with the forward end of it and something round on the stern end of it there, and, you know, pretty soon, I mean, in no time, we'll be putting the breast hook in. That's our next move is putting the breast hook in. Uh, we're going to put the in whales after that, the corner knees, and the caps. We're trying to get some nice oak. I have some. I just haven't looked at it lately, but we've got some with the green that'll follow this right around. So that'll be really pretty, you know. And uh, this is our breast hook right over here. There it is right there. It's the sister to the breast hook that we put in the last skiff. 
You know, they were like, they were like this together, and now they're like this. One's in the skiff, and the other one's going to be in this boat. So, and it's nice and figured. It'll be beautiful. It really will. So, then we're going to get painting it. So, it'll really look nice then. Of course, the gunnels will be bright like the last boat. You know, really, really nice. We're going to sand them up pretty and put quite a number of coats on it so it's, you know, really sharp, you know. And, uh, hey, the beat goes on. Pretty good. <laughs> 